Now here's something you rarely see. A popular national park and no lineup. Hello. How are you doing? Not too bad. You have? Uh, yes. After traveling to the coast, it was time to visit an old faithful spot that I'm very familiar with. And would you like a map? Yes, please. Thank you. How are the uh, campgrounds doing? I was thinking of uh, the Mammoth Cap Campground. I know it's first come, first serve. It did not fill yesterday. Oh, perfect. Uh, it's a little bit busier today than yesterday, though. But... Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Of the five entrances, I chose the west entrance near Idaho Falls. Well, in Yellowstone, there's only two guarantees. One is, you're going to see lots of wildlife. And two, you're going to get stuck in traffic somehow. And uh, I'm stuck in traffic now because of road construction, which is ongoing. It never seems to end in Yellowstone. And I've been here a couple of times before, and the same thing happens. It's the extremes in temperatures, the frost, it's the traffic and it's the constant upgrades, um, which is good news. It means they're paying attention to the roads, but it does mean every once in a while, you're just gonna have to stop, open your window and smell the pines. As you can see by the snowbanks, this was not peak season, which is my primary reason for being here. I've already experienced the tourist season, so what about the cool months? I found a place to camp the night and waited for the morning sun to warm things up a little. Well, despite the sun, winter is in the air. And uh, this is probably one of my last nice days I'm going to see. And if you look in the background, you can probably tell that I'm not boondocking, I'm actually in a paid campsite. And this is Mammoth Campsite at Yellowstone Park. Um, it's a beautiful place, although you know I prefer boondocking. And the reason I didn't boondock this particular time, especially because it's Yellowstone, is there is no boondocking in Yellowstone. You have to go outside the park to actually boondock. Now, when I was coming in here, there is an area just to the west that has some dirt roads that apparently you can boondock. But when I thought about it, it just didn't seem very practical for several reasons. First of all was economics. That uh, although it's noisier here, there's trucks and all that, um, to park outside the park and drive in all the time, I don't save anything because I'd be using a lot more gas. Oh, like that truck's using, boy, he's noisy. Uh, and it would take up more of my time. And the other reason is when I came in, the roads were snowy and muddy. And did I really want to camp out in some remote place where I could potentially get stuck? It's certainly gonna be a mess. Whereas here, if it, if it does start raining or snowing, uh, the roads are plowed. So there's a little bit more safety in that regard. But boy, it's a noisy spot. And that's one thing I'm not really used to. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. Other reasons were um, I'd be leaving my, my trailer unattended because especially in a place like Yellowstone, I'm going to be with my Jeep all over the park. And there's a lot of places where you cannot park a trailer in Yellowstone. So it's best you leave it somewhere. Now, the fact that I'd be leaving my trailer the entire day, I'd feel more safe it being in a secure area where there's an attendant and all that than out in the middle of nowhere, uh, especially the fact that there's probably still a few bears out. So. 
I weighed all the, you know, the pros and the cons, and I decided it was best just to simply camp in, a, in, a, in the campground in Yellowstone. And because it's late in season, the good news is there were places available. Whereas if, if it's in peak season, there's not. Now here's the bad news. Most of the campsites are closed after summer, and even many shops in Mammoth Hot Springs have this familiar sign. Then there's the third problem. Much of Yellowstone is no longer accessible when the snow arrives. The park has official road closures, starting with Denraven Pass on October 13th, until most park roads are closed on November 2nd. The only road open year-round is the one from the north entrance near Mammoth Hot Springs and goes east to Cook City. With that in mind, my own visit was restricted to October. Despite having access to most of the park, I decided to just concentrate on certain areas. My first destination was the Norris Geyser Basin. The Steamboat Geyser is the most impressive in Yellowstone, as well as the least predictable. That's amazing. Look at the pressure. Apparently there are two vents, but from this angle, I just see one. But the best reaction was from the little kids on the trail. Sometimes this geyser can blast water 300 feet in the air. An impressive display of the force of nature. While well, geysers can really give you an adrenaline rush, there are also lots of sites that have the opposite effect. This pool reminds me of a relaxing sauna. Perhaps a mud bath as well? Nope. The temperatures are lethal, but the bubbles are fun to watch. The Norris Geyser Basin is definitely worth the hike. My next stop was a little place called the Artist's Paint Pots. And it was pretty apparent where they got their name from. There was one big advantage of being there in cold air, as it made the mist dance above the rainbow stream. While some parts of the park were saturated in color, others didn't seem to have any color at all. Like the steam jets of the Roaring Mountain. Well, forgive me for passing up Old Faithful, but there is just too many tourists for my taste. I did, however, brave the crowds for one attraction that can't be missed. The immersive experience of the Grand Prismatic Spring. 
Now the best viewpoint of the spring is from space, as you've probably seen on Google Maps. But as drones are banned, and rightly so, you must experience the thrill from the boardwalk. This is the largest hot spring in the United States, but size isn't the only impressive detail. A walk through the mist reveals a rainbow of brilliant colors. The stunning display of colors are the result of microbes that form mats. Each temperature a different palette. Add a little wind and you have a symphony. Geothermal springs are just as deadly as they are beautiful. A mix of toxins, viruses, and searing heat. Admire, but don't touch. Did you notice something was missing? The animals. As I said in the intro, they're everywhere, especially near the roads. In every sighting, tourists seem to want to slam on their brakes and take a cell phone picture. Sure wish they'd pull over first. This young buck had it made, as the hot springs kept the grass green throughout the fall. Now he just needed a nice comfortable spot to relax and chew his cud. Being that I was camped by Mammoth Hot Springs, I kind of took it for granted. But it was actually travertine, a limestone deposit of the mineral springs over time. The intricate detail of the terraces is stunning. But it's the colors and textures that most people marvel at.
Well, you can't visit Yellowstone and not kind of wonder where it got its name from. Well, it's the eroded sandstone cliffs on the edge of the Yellowstone River to the east. Its gorges are just gorgeous. I had to say that. With the addition of the canyons and the waterfalls, it's just another example of how varied and diverse the landscape is here. The open range of the Lamar Valley is perfect grazing land for bison. And the vast rolling hills are for me a special treat. Do you hear that? It's so subtle. And here it's so rare. It's a little bit of wind. Few animals. This is when I love being out in the wilderness. And that's not very easy in Yellowstone because during the summer months especially, when there's so many tourists, all you can hear is the traffic noise. So there are definitely some big advantages of coming out to Yellowstone in the colder seasons. So it's my last morning in the park with just enough time for a quick cup of coffee before I pack up and head onward. The great thing about Yellowstone is there's always something you didn't see or just looks different depending on the season. As I follow the Yellowstone River north, it's not as much looking back as it is saying we will meet again. I hope you enjoyed this video and will check out my others as well.